This is my first Teams meeting. Uh, can you see my screen? Yep. Okay. Uh, so we'll go through the funding that you're going to be receiving, how you can request that funding, um, go through what UK's College of Engineering kind of expects with their partnership with Stan, mm -hmm. uh, a quick overview of TSA, make sure that you understand what kind of you've signed up for. Um, and then we did, during that time, we spent about an hour uh, uploading all of your students from Infinite Campus into the TSA system. I'm going to show you how to do that, but we won't take the time for you to actually do that on the call. Um, and then we'll talk about the regional conference, what we have planned for that. And then um, Stan actually joined us, Stan and his wife Karen from Iceland. They were there on vacation, uh, so they Skyped in or Zoomed in and they talked to the whole room and um, <coughs> just kind of explained their expectations. And um, anyway, just great people all all around. So yeah. Um, so as just a quick reminder on the funding. You're going to receive $5,000 per year. Um, 2000 of that is going to go towards your sorry up to 5000. Uh, Two thousand dollars is going to cover your dues, which you're going to blue cap. So that means you can register every kid in your program for the same four hundred dollar fee. Um, and then conference transportation, that's going to help you get to regional and state conferences for your busing and that sort of thing. And then registration for state conference, a thousand dollars of that two thousand will go towards that. And I don't know. I think we've already already published the cost. Yeah, so student registrations eighty five dollars. Um, so that'll cover you know about what 11, 12 kids mm -hmm. for you to take to the state conference. Um, regional conference should not have much of a cost, if any. When we get to like when we when we host at EKU, we charge each chapter twenty five dollars to come just so there's a little bit of skin in the game so they don't back out of the last minute. Um, but it also covers the registration system that we use, which charges per student uh, in the system. So uh, we may have something similar. We're planning on hosting at that site that we were at um, when we hosted that in person orientation at Hazard Community and Technical College. OK. Uh, that seems to be a fairly central location and they've got the space that we need where we can host various events and then have like an award ceremony at the end of the day. Uh, so all that money will come to you once you fill out an invoice and I'll send that to you after this call or you may have already gotten it. Did you? Mm, uh, I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah. Anyway, it's going to look something like this like this was no, oh, that's not going to work at all. <laughs> um, Anyway, it's just a word document that I'll send you and all you do is fill out. The top, I think I got that. Yeah, yeah, and just send it back to me and then that way. You're basically requesting us to send you the $2000 to cover your student expenses. Okay. So you just fill out the top here uh, and I've done all the invoice part of it. And then we'll send you a check so you can pay your dues and have money in your school activity fund for your uh, transportation and your registration. And then your $1,500 stipend will come directly to you in the spring once you satisfy all of Stan's requirements, which is you roster all of your students. You do have to come to regional and state. If you want to go to nationals, that's great. We don't typically expect first year advisors, especially to figure that out. Um, mm -hmm. And then just engage with UK's College of Engineering. And these are just some ideas that we came up with just brainstorming with Doug and then uh, Tony Jackson is their head recruiter there, and he, these are some ideas that he came up with, but they have their E day, their engineering day every, uh, I think it's in February. Um, that's on campus, obviously, and then the, they do, they may be hosting some of our state conference events on campus, uh, specifically, hopefully our PVC kayak competition will be in UK's pool like Doug does the, the cardboard kayaks. Mm -hmm. uh, we're hoping to be able to use their pool instead of the little pool that's at the Marriott where the state conference will be. Um, you know, allowing recruiters to come into your building, going on campus tours, uh, sharing marketing materials that they may hand out, but just, you know, 
making sure that UK's College of Engineering has access to your students and help them understand um, what their program is all about. Um, Stan, I don't know if he's done this in your program, but once he starts engaging with some of these schools, like Jots and Central is a good example, he basically just worked with the counselor and the teacher there, identified a couple students, they filled out a simple application, and then he comes and gives them a full ride scholarship to UK. Um, it's a pretty amazing deal. So this, yeah. he's using TSA to kind of help identify those students that are going to be good for his post-secondary scholarship. So, okay. Um, yeah, he's he's helped a couple of mine. Awesome. Yeah. Past few years. Yeah, and then at the end of the conference year, probably the first week of May or something, we'll send out a survey just to collect some non-identifiable data from you, like how many students did competed at regionals, how many competed at state, how many, you know, what what UK. Uh, engagements did you do? Um, and then we'll use that to then compile all the data together to send to Stan so we just have a nice report to send to him so he understands what his money is going towards. And then once we receive that survey back, that's when you'll get your, your stipend check. Okay. And then Stan says this is renewable up to four years. So as long as you meet all the requirements, fill out that survey, then the following fall, you'll get another check for $2,000 and then another spring check for $1,500 um, for those for the for the four years. Um, any questions on just the funding or the kind of the commitment? Nope. Okay. So that well, that blue cap. So if I have. 50 students in my program. Uh, is that going to cover? That's enough to cover everybody. Yep. Yeah. So blue cap uh, is a flat rate fee and you register as many kids as you want. So you could okay. technically. That's what you I could technically I register every kid in the ATC if you wanted to. Um, okay. But, you know, we want to show Stan and we want uh, Stan to see kind of the power in numbers that this is how many kids that he's engaging with. Um, once November, I think it's, uh, let's see, there's something called priority membership. And once it is over, um, then that price goes up. Yeah. So November 19th, right now we have a hundred, we don't charge state dues right now on blue cap. Um, only nationals charges that $400, but if you waited until after November 19th to register, um, you'd have to pay another additional $150. So just make sure you get registered and affiliated um, by November 19th, but that I'll show you how to do that here in a minute. Okay. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so just real quick, and you may have seen this, already so i'm not it's pretty much the same presentation we did at summer conference um so i'm not going to bore you with a lot of this and i can send it to you because some of this may help like your parents and your administration understand what you're in into uh tsa they claim to be intracurricular in kentucky we call it co-curricular but really for tsa to be successful just like skills usa or fbla it's not just extracurriculars not just after school should be kind of embedded into your curriculum in your time okay. so you know it may be that your students are practicing the drones competition during your aerospace class or what uh or doing some cad prompts you know as part of ied and that sort of thing so um yeah and then we have it talks about service projects so the national office does the american cancer society is their national service project we at the state level let our um, state officers pick a service project. Like last year, it was a program called More Love Letters. The year before it was Special Olympics, the year before that it was the International Book Project. So we try to find something local to the state. Um, and then we typically, like the year it was the International Book Project, um, schools brought donated books to state conference. We then counted them. And then the, the high school and the middle school that brought the most books that year received a 3D printer 
that they could take back to their program. So um, you'll hear more about that probably in October. Our um, state officers are actually meeting online tonight and they're going to decide what the service project is. So you'll you'll hear more about that. But we want students to not only compete, but also understand that it's important to give back to their local community or at least to the Commonwealth. Uh, just an overview of the national office over a quarter of a million students. Um, compete and are part of TSA. Um, and then 48 of the 50 states are involved as well. At the state level last year, I think we had uh, over 3300 students. The year before that we had 4500, but last year, as you know, it was kind of a, a mess. Um, and so when it comes to competitions. <clears throat> one thing that you'll receive. Once you affiliate is called the event guide. And this is a pretty overwhelming document, but it has everything in it. Let's see, here's the high school. Uh, this is 354 pages long, so I'm not going to bore you with a lot of it, but it does have some good information in it, especially like if you're looking to align to NGSS, it has some of that in here. Um, it has the standards for technological engineering literacy, computer science standards, ISTE, um, and then even some math standards. So if you need that, it's, it is embedded. And they have somewhere. Maybe they've changed the way it's struck. Oh, there, but it's sideways. So this helps you understand. Um, like for the math standards. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I can rotate that. Nice. Yeah, like which competitions are aligned to which standards. So if you need the data and the standards alignment. Uh, okay. They have it in matrix format there. Now I got to figure out how to get back to here we go. A lot everything you see in this national guide is going to be national standards. So and we'll get to this here in a minute, but like for animatronics, for example. It says one team per chapter may participate, so that actually means for the national conference. If you as a school wanted to send a team per chapter, you could do that to the nationals. I never let students if you weren't in the top two in Kentucky. Um, I did not let you waste my time or your money going to a, a national conference to try to compete. Uh, yeah, and then they also align to the leadership skills. They call them the 10 core leadership skills. So if you're doing anything with like work, ethic, work ethic certification, that's going to be aligned in there too. And then it's also aligned to career clusters in case you need that. Um, we'll talk about competitions more here in a minute. This is kind of how they have it broken down on the website. So you, if your kids are interested in, uh, you know, manufacturing and transportation, you can click on that link and it'll show you the five co competitions that align directly to that. Okay. We've also created uh, a project lead the way crosswalk. It's in the Google Classroom and you'll get access to the Google. I'll share the link with you here in a minute. OK. Uh, yeah, so if you have kids in like aerospace, these are the competitions that are most closely aligned. So okay. you I some teachers say, hey, kids, these are the six competitions that you can do just because it directly aligns with the course. Other teachers say, hey, kids, here's the 37 competitions. Pick one and get busy. So that's kind of up to you yeah. and how you want to. Uh, uh, let kids decide or help them decide which competitions are best for them. State competitions, so you won't find these in that event guide, but PBC kayaks is one of our newer ones. We we actually got to do that at a couple regional events before um, COVID hit and we couldn't and state conference was canceled that year. And then drones, you're familiar with that one. And then we have um, a social media competition. This is a state regional and state competition. Um, where students basically use social media as a TSA chapter throughout the year and then present their, you know, their engagement, uh, how they um, interacted with their social media audience and that sort of thing. Hmm. Uh, and then we have a flight simulator competition as well that your students may be interested in. Um, all those are located also in the Google Classroom. 
So there's a section called state only event guides. And so PVC is in here, social media, flight sim, and then the drones uh, event guides are in, in the Google Classroom. Yeah, we're not going to go into computer science, but just so you know, there are events specific to computer science, so that doesn't really impact you so much. Um, yeah, so I have a lot of teachers, and this isn't directed at you, but some teachers say I just don't have time after school to do TSA, otherwise I would, and it, like I said, it really should be part of the school day, and it may be in your, if you're teaching like a CNC or a, a machining class, you could do like dragsters, yeah. and they mail them, um, and so it could be a student project during the school year, and then maybe you send your top three dragsters to regional, and then race them at the regional competition. Um, there's a program of work built into the national office that kind of helps you understand like when you should be doing what throughout the year and you'll get access to that as well once you register and pay those dues. And I'll show you where that is once we get to it. The advisor toolkit's a good resource. And this is. Uh, uh, they changed the link, of course. Um, yeah, they call it the TSA toolkit, and it's going to have a lot of things. <clears throat> it has brochures, it has a PowerPoint if you want to tweak that, it has a poster if you need to print it, you know, just a lot of resources mm -hmm. that you can get access to. Um, like I said, some sample agendas, um, ways to recruit, and that sort of thing. Um, Yeah, do know Perkins 5 can cover your expenses. So if you're using Perkins money, that'll pay for your sub. It can pay for your travel, your hotel rooms if you're staying the night um, as it relates to CTSOs and then all, even your dues. So for you, I think it's 10 bucks. So if you want Perkins to cover that, uh, hopefully your administration will allow that. Just know that Perkins can't pay for student travel or expenses or uh, consumables. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about that later. All right, that's it on that. Um, so dress code came up and I wanted to just make sure everybody understood this. Um, Nationals has their own dress code. This is our state dress code. Hopefully you can see that. Let's zoom in a little bit more. This is what national dress code kind of looks like. Blue blazers, blue shirts, red ties with the patch on it. We don't force that at state. We really just want kids in business casual at least. Uh, so polo shirts, khakis, something that, you know, an engineer would wear as they go into work. Um, and that's what we expect at regionals as well. So regional and state, you know, if they have a polo shirt or if they want to wear a shirt and tie, they're more than welcome to. They're not going to get penalized. We just want students to understand what, like if you're going to a professional event, what what is acceptable and what's not. So um, we just have this poster that you could print off if you wanted. It's on our website just for students to understand. The only event that you do have to wear official address is called Chapter Team, and it's like parliamentary procedures where they're running a business meeting and banging gavels. And um, so if you do have students that want to do Chapter Team, they would have to have official dress. I honestly, when I was an advisor, all of our blue blazers came from Goodwill. Uh, I would just run up there occasionally and grab every blue blazer I could find. And then you could buy that patch off of the TSA store for like six bucks or something. Um, if you have students that want to run for state office, they would have to be an official dress as well when they come to state conference. But we can cross that bridge when we come to it if you have students um, that want to do that. Questions on TSA in general? No, uh, <clears throat> not yet. You've pitched it before. Yeah, I'm good at trying. Uh, there for a while, I was having to run skills, so I couldn't bail on that until uh, my turn was up. So, gotcha. Okay. 
um, I'm trying to think of anything on the website. Regionals, a lot of it's TBD right now for the the Pigman region, just because we're still working with HCTC to pick a date. We're going to try to land like mid to late March just to get away from snow as much as we can. So more more information will be coming. Um, yeah, so there's nothing really on here it's when it comes to the in the spring too, especially out east. Yeah, great. <laughs> uh, state conference is pretty much set. It's going to be April 25th through the 27th at the Marriott Griffin Gate in Lexington. Uh, there will be a lot more information. These will be links eventually once we've finalized all this. Um, hotels are about $122 a room. Typically, you'd throw four kids in a room with two queen beds, um, and then you're really only paying like 30 bucks a kid per night for rooms. Um, as long as your school allows that, um, that should be fine this year. I mean, the, the Marriott's fine with it, but whatever your school's COVID protocols are going to be in, in April. Um, like you can see the student registration here. Advisor registration is $125. That can be paid through your Perkins money. However, you do get a $50 discount if you help run an event. And teachers, for the first time, we don't just throw you in an event. You're actually a co-coordinator, so you'll be paired with a veteran mm -hmm. advisor. So if you wanted to do like a uh, flight sim or something, you, you'd be paired with uh, another advisor that would kind of help you understand how to run an event. But it saves your school some money. We just do that discount to encourage teachers to help us. Uh, voting delegates, that's how we vote. Each school gets two to three members to vote for uh, state officers, as well as either uh, bylaw amendments, and that's based on the number of members you have. Um, so you'll hear more about that as we get closer. And then we do VEX exactly like VEX is. You do have to register through the VEX, whatever they call that, roboteventscom There's no co additional cost, but they do want that. Uh, you do have to have a team, a VEX team, in addition to the TSA VEX team. Um, so I don't know if you have kids interested in that or not, but um, yeah, that's kind of it on here. Um, yeah, a lot more coming soon. And then there's some scholarships kids can apply for. There's various awards, like if they win uh, CAD engineering, they get a $12,000 scholarship to Sullivan. Um, I assume they're going to do that as again, but I'll have to reach out and confirm. Uh, if kids do well in CAD, they get a free testing voucher for Autodesk products if they want to take an industry cert. So, hmm. uh, yeah, we're still working on trying to beef this up a little bit. A lot of it's CAD related, uh, but we're we're trying to find and encourage more people to give out awards in addition to the plaques and the uh, the medals that kids give. We do the medals for the kids and then the plaques we say kind of stay in the school so you could hang those in the hallway or in your classroom or somewhere just so you have some proof of what you've done, what you've accomplished at state. Yeah. At regionals, we typically just do ribbons like, you know, blue, white and red or blue, red and white ribbons for first, second and third. Um, yeah, so let's move on to affiliation. So this. Once you log into that system, uh, and I sent some directions a while ago on how to log in. There were like, I don't know, 15 steps or something to get to this point. But once you get logged in, like right now I'm logged in as Floyd County School of Innovation just to show you what the system looks like. Okay. Um, so they, um, it doesn't look like they've added any students yet. So to add students, the easiest way is just go to add members. And you can individually type this in and click save and add next if you want. But the easiest way, since you're going to be adding your whole program, is to do a bulk upload. Okay. So if you go to bulk CSV upload, download the template, that's going to give you the CSV template and it's going to tell you what data they want. Um, so they need to know. And it's got to be in the same format when you upload it. So first name, middle name, last name um suffix if they have it grade gender demographic and then member title member title is is pretty much always going to be member um, so you can just drag that all the way down 
you could do if you have chapter officers you can list that in here but they don't they don't really gain anything by doing that and then you can see demographics over here so you can you know copy and paste white in um, and black african american whatever you want to do there um, the only thing that's required is first name last name uh, grade gender so you don't have to worry about middle name or suffix technically um, and then gender you can see here is male female opt out or non-disclosed however you want to list that you can do i can't show you how to do this because i don't have infinite campus access but you can do a a report out of infinite campus and you can go to blank spreadsheet and then you can pick all your classes and it'll generate a blank spreadsheet and it comes out looking something like this where you'll have grade and name that's about the only data you get but it's still better than nothing um, yeah. The only problem is, is when it comes out of Infinite Campus, we found this out when we were in Hazard. It comes out with the name all in one um, yeah. block there. So I don't know if you know how to do text to columns, but if you highlight that column, you go to data and then text to columns, hmm. uh, fixed width, and then um, we want to do. You can see the preview here, so it's going to take this out. Yeah. Uh, and that didn't do hang on this needs to be delimited sorry so the first thing changed to delimited and then you can see right now it's in one column but if i add space it's yeah. going to space it but i also want to add comma so it gets rid of that comma too and then when i finish it comes into three separate and then i can just copy and paste you know last name into last name yeah and so on and then the grade anyway once you get this save that file And then back over here, you can just drag that file right into the bulk upload. OK. And then if I did it right, it would show you everything that it brought in. Hmm. And then you just click save right here and then you're done. Cool. And so that brings all your kids in. And then all you have to do at that point is submit your membership. So that would be I'm not going to do it because they don't have any schools, but once you submit, it'll generate an invoice for you to be able to generate a purchase order for your school. So it'll look like, let me show you uh, a school that already has an invoice just so you can see. Oh, so not that one. So this school should have an invoice generated. No. That's weird. Let's try this one. Yeah, so you'll get an invoice. You can uh, print this off or email it or whatever you need to do. Um, and they, theirs was four hundred dollars for the blue cap, and then they have two advisors. That's why it's four hundred twenty dollars. So, okay. Uh, and then you'll be able to submit that. So you can once you get our four hundred dollars, then you'll be able to do that and jump through those hoops to get all your kids registered and rostered and then you can there's some little nice little features in here if you're interested you can print off little membership cards or certificates um, and it'll just generate a a certificate that you can give the kids if you wanted and then um, I always did like for my graduating seniors, if they were in TSA for like three or their four years and were active, we would do like TSA cords for graduation and that sort of thing, just so they were kind of identified as being a member. So that just things you could think about it as you start to grow your uh, your chapter. Any questions on affiliation or bulk uploading? Um, it doesn't look too bad. OK, I'd be glad to help or Andy, Andy and I could jump on a call um, and help you if, if you get stuck on any of that. Looks easier than skills. OK, that's good to hear. Um, yeah, I don't think there's anything too tedious in that system. Now this, like you can see this school has all their kids registered. Um, yeah. And then they have to be in the national system in order for you to register for regionals and state. But the nice thing is, is um, 
once you register them in this system, all you do is check a box next to their name and say, yes, this kid's coming to regional. And then you pick what events. So you're not having to enter their information multiple times. It's just you dump them all in at the beginning and then you can just pick them out of the out of the system and then assign them to whatever competitions they're going to do. I'm going to show you so we haven't. Um, like I said, we're still working on the regional what regionals is going to look like for this new region, but I just want to show you. We'll model it after EKU's event schedule. Um, so they did, and we won't have any middle school in this region because we don't have any middle schools that are part of the Pigman Scholars Program. Um, so we would basically ask you to come in. Um, or sorry, these were these were online submissions. So in order to judge things up front, we'd have students submit through a Google form their documentation, and then we could judge it beforehand. So it was all due like 10 days before the conference by midnight. Um, and then there were a couple that we did a drop off submission like dragsters so we could spec out the cars and make sure that they were legal. Um, what we typically did at EKU and we may do this for the for the uh, pigment region. We would ask teachers to come in on this Friday and we'd have pizza and, and drinks or whatever. And then you as teachers would help judge all the events and that helps you understand, you know, how the rubrics work, how what a good submission looks like compared to what a bad submission looks like. Um, and then the day of we typically ran a bunch of events in the morning and then we'd have a lunch break and then we do an award ceremony after that. So for regionals, it's pretty much we'll pick probably six or seven events to do that day. Um, and then have lunch and then do an award ceremony. So your kids really will only have time for like one in person event that day. Um, now that doesn't mean they couldn't do an online only like some of these on demand video was only online. So if they wanted to submit that beforehand and then show up the day of and compete in uh, CAD, for example, that would be great. But I wouldn't let I wouldn't ask your kids to do more than one or two events at regional. Okay. And one way we're different than skills, um, you, your kids don't have to like specialize. That was one thing that always frustrated me with skills is my students were engineering students, but some of them wanted to compete in welding and they couldn't or they wanted to do auto tech because that's what their hobby was at home and they weren't allowed to. So, you know, if your kids want to do fashion design, that's great. If they want to do flight, they can do flight. Uh, if they want to do video game design. So we don't limit based on pathway or program area. Um, we encourage them to do whatever their passions happen to be. We won't be able to do PVC kayak at, at Hazard because they don't have a pool, but um, the plan is later, once I finalize how much space we get on campus, then we'll get together with all the teachers in the region on a, another call like this and say we want to do these six events or we want to do these seven. And before that, we'll probably send out like a Google form and you can kind of say, yeah, I probably have kids interested in this event, but none in this one. Uh, and that'll help us figure out, narrow down which events we want to run at regionals and which ones maybe they'll just wait and do at state. We don't do any uh, qualification from regional or state. So if you have kids that didn't compete at regional, in animatronics because we didn't do it or because they didn't want to or they just weren't ready they could still come to state and compete in it um, so i always told my students regionals was practice get in front of the judges let them give you some good feedback and then you can have about a month between regional and state to make your competition even better for when you get to the state conference we do allow up to six competitions at state uh, some of the competitions like on demand video. Those students when they come to conference day one, they are handed a prompt and then they have 48 hours to run around the conference center in the hotel rooms wherever and do and put together film a video, put it all together and then submit it by five o'clock on Tuesday or something like that. And then we judge them. So that one pretty much takes the entire time they're there, mm -hmm. but other events um, like flight sim, for example, they're going to record a video of them flying their flight simulator at school or at home 
and then they come in and just present to the judges what they did and that takes like five minutes so it really depends on the event on how much time um they're gonna have it at conference and i as a past advisor i always made students pick a comp a competition that took a lot of time there and then they could pick another one so i always said you have to do a competition that's on site and you also have to do one that you prep at school um so another example like tech problem solving is like instant challenges in ied where they bring a toolbox with a bunch of tools we dump a bunch of materials in front of them and they have to build a, a device that launches a ping pong ball or something so that one takes like five hours of one day so they're they're pretty much locked in but i always tried to keep my students as busy as possible just so they didn't get into trouble yeah uh, let me show you one of the event guides and one of the rubrics just so you understand what that looks like. And then we'll jump on to the Google Classroom and that's pretty much all I have. Okay. So the events are obviously very different, but they all have the same look. The only exception is PVC Kayak and we just haven't had time to put it into this format. Um, but all the national event guides are going to look the same. There's an overview. The eligibility, once again, that's national. So this we're allowed in this event we're allowed to send three teams to uh, from state on to nationals uh, this tells them the timeline so they have 10 minutes once they enter the room to present they have five minutes for the interview portion it tells them that competition attire is required uh, this tells them what they should be doing before the conference and then what they're doing when they get there so this one for example they walk in and they they're going to submit a portfolio on flash drives they're going to leave their display and their model and then the judges judge that and then if they're in the top 12 then they move to the presentation round um, once again this is nationals we do ours a little bit different based on the events and we created uh, i don't think we posted it yet Anyway, I'll share that with you when it comes out, but we've created a matrix that helps you understand how we've modified the event to fit our state. So it may say that every kid presents because we know there's not going to be more than 12 teams. Um, so look for that. It'll come out uh, at a later date once we finalize all that information. And then it goes through very detailed. This is what needs to be in the, the portfolio. It has to have title page table of contents three possible solutions, a written summary. Um, a plan of work log is needed for almost every event, so they have to document on this date we did this, this is who helped, this date we did this, uh, and then they have to they have to uh, cite any references they may have. It tells them what size their display has to be. I mean, it's, it's overly detailed, but it's amazing how many kids come in and their display is five feet and it's only allowed to be four feet, so. Um, and then it talks about how they're evaluated and then uh, then you're going to get the rubric every rubric has go no go at the top so if kids show up and don't have their portfolio on two flash drives they're automatically disqualified we just call that no go they're not going to win so why waste the judge's time mm -hmm. or if they show up and they don't if their display is not the right size in this case then they're going to be dq'd so that's the most important thing before the kids get on the bus is to make sure that they have all of that but then it goes through, you know, they're going to get 40 points for their display. 110 points, so most of their points are going to come from their portfolio. So even if they have a, an amazing display and model, they may not even place in the top three because their documentation was terrible. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing I will draw your attention to. So this, for example, this is worth 10 points. It's times one, but the selected solution it's worth 20 points so every this is going to be worth twice as much as this one so look for these times to you when you go through that um and then then they get points for their presentation as well and that's how the judges are going to determine top three um, and then at the very end of every event guide it's just the event coordinators instructions this is how if you were the event coordinator for engineering design, this is how you would set up the room. This is when you're going to meet kids where um, it's so it doesn't really help you much, but it's just there in case you wanted to see if kids are curious, like what the flow of the competition is going to look like when they get there. It definitely helps with that. So, 
Uh, yeah, the last thing I'll share, uh, there's a lot of stuff out on the national website, but they have it placed in a lot of different locations. But one thing you're going to want to make sure you understand are the themes and problems for the events. Uh, so like engineering design, we just talked about that. This year's theme is resort, uh, sorry, restore and improve an urban infrastructure. So kids were going to need to use that theme and that's what their entire project will be based around. Hmm. Uh, you know, if you have kids doing animatronics, it's going to be an exhibit for a children's hospital waiting room. Uh, and that's going to be like some sort of little robotic teddy bear or something that talks to the kids in the waiting room or something like that. Hmm. We've put all of that because, like I said, they like the themes and problems are located here. And then if there are any updates to the competitions, like if they like see they've already found a problem with the event guide, so they fix that here. Okay. So, we put all of that under advisors on our website. So instead of you having to go hunt for it all, there's a new advisor handbook. That toolkit I showed you earlier, you can link straight to it. But down here, themes and problems, general rules, competition updates. We tried to make it easier for you to be able to get to that um, quickly without having to go hunt on the national website. And there's some funding letters and some guest speaker templates that you have access to on here as well. Um, but the Google Classroom, this is brand new. We just built this over the summer. Um, so it has a bunch of resources in it. It has the advisor handbook in there. Um, the state competitions, like I said, the state only events, and this will be run at regional and state accordingly. Those are in here. Uh, the presentation I just went over is in here. And then one thing that came out of COVID that we've never had before are a ton of digital submissions. Since we did everything virtual last year, they had to submit electronically. So if your kids are like, hey, I'm interested in doing board game, well, you can come in here and you can see the first place portfolio and then the first place rubric. And that way, I'm not saying this is the best in the world. I'm just saying it was the best in Kentucky during a pandemic. So just yeah. keep that in mind. We have that disclaimer up here that, you know, just keep in mind that themes change. So if a kid submitted board game, you know, the theme this year may be different. But we just wanted you to have access to what a good submission should look like. Like if you have kids doing digital video, it's actually going to have the video they submitted. And then it also has the rubric. So just because it was first place doesn't mean they got a perfect score. So this is going to tell you and the students, hey, they lost some points here. They did perfect on this. Um, so we're hoping that improves the quality of some of our submissions because you would be surprised, especially after judging a lot of virtual, what kids tried to pass off and thought that they had even had a chance. So, yeah. Uh, and it also helps you like better understand what it even is as a competition. Yeah. Middle schools in here as well. You're not going to need that. We put a bunch of past prompts. We've never released these before, but I we pay $500 a year for what's called cram. Uh, and what it is, is it's the curricular resource assessment and materials document. This is what we use at state conference. So if there's a test that goes along with uh, tech bowl, for example, which is like fast, you know, fastest finger, quick recall, governor, scholar, there's a test they have to take first. And if they're in the top 10 teams, then they move on to the to the quick recall round. So all the test questions from last year are in this document. So if you want to, if your kids want to cram, uh, they're going to have access to that. And once again, we just hope that it improves and makes our competitions more uh, fierce and just brings the competition. Uh, like this is coding last year. So if you have kids that want to practice, these are the cases that they were given or the prompts that they were given when they were in the room. And it wasn't a room last year. It was online, but you get the idea. Uh, but even like CAD is in here, so that's this is forensics. So they were given this forensics uh, prompt. Here's the forensics test. So anyway, those are all in there. So if you want kid, if kids want to prep, that's the best way to do it um, for some of those that have tests or have prompts. Um, the last one I'll show you is 
tech problem solving. That that's overwhelmingly our most popular competition. Okay. So last year, if it would have been in person, we would have done. Uh, tech These are the questions they were asked live. So here's the problem solving instructions. We gave them these materials. We would have, sorry, if this would have been in person. Yeah. And then they had to do whatever this prompt says. So it's a good practice for your kids. They're obviously not going to get the same prompt again, mm -hmm. but they basically had to use the items that we gave them and build a solution that kept the tennis ball uh, as far off the horizontal edge of the table as possible, building whatever contraption. So it wasn't a vertical tower. In this case, it was a, a horizontal truss or something that they had to build. Cool. Um, so yeah, that's all in the Google Classroom, and, and that's pretty much it down at the bottom. So you have, and once again, keep in mind that in 2017, you know, four or five years ago, the competition may be evolved so much that those prompts aren't applicable anymore, but it could still be a good way for your kids just to practice. You know, you got 60 minutes, design this in CAD. Um, and especially my, my chapter kind of got to the point where I had so many kids interested in some of the more popular competitions that I did local competitions using similar prompts. And then I would send the best three of my school on to regional and then the best three on to state or what have you. So yeah. Okay. I'm going to stop that.